Uh, you've all been to major championships. And Shay, could I ask you about the situation with regard to uh, Van Marwijk? Uh, he's only come in in January. This is his first competitive fixture. Now, they've had a few decent, friendly results in the lead-up to this World Cup. But from the players' point of view, will he have been able to get his message and his football ethos across to this Australia squad in time to have them ready for the World I Cup? I think so. More so than Jair. Spanish, the Spanish <laughs> he's, manager. He's a very little Two little days, I think, they organised his team. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, January they've had friendlies, as you say, Peter, they've had some time. Obviously, it's not an ideal situation. Normally, it's the manager who's got them qualified mm -hmm. who would take them into the major finals, and he's not done that. But, you know, I think he'll probably just look at the first game. This is, a, this is He couldn't ask for a tougher start against France today, really. It'll be a big, big, you know, question mark over his team and how yeah. he sets up and how they defend, because let's, let's not get away from They'll be defending for long periods of this game with, with the France team that they're playing against, and if they can get anything from the game today, it'll be a big bonus. Yeah, and we also know that Australia in the past have a physical side to their game. They're very energetic. <clears throat> Under Van Marwijk, is there a possibility that uh, that physical side may be even accentuated even more? Because we remember yeah. as he, when he managed the Netherlands, they became a very different side under him, didn't they? I think it's something that he does instill. <laughs> um, Shay's mentioned in terms of has he had enough time. I think the biggest issue with this Australia squad is the lack of quality in it. Yeah. So I think the defensive side of things, the shape, the structure, the distances between the back forward and midfield, that's what's going to be imperative. And that's what he does very, very well. He's proven to get his teams set up in a very, very competitive fashion, hard to break down, but they still have to pose a problem going the other way. That he's mentioned about Rogic, what, how important he's going to be on the transition when they win the ball back. I just find that when I look at this Australia team, I just don't see enough quality throughout the, the whole squad.